Welcome to DeltaCast Tutorials. Today I'll be applying a volar splint using traditional plaster. However, I will show you a new technique using orthoglass solo. It makes it a lot easier and expedites the uh, curing stage. So with this particular splint, it's going to be on the volar surface and the injuries are going to be concentrated in your wrist, uh, excuse me, the patient's wrist. And the injury could be as simple as a sprain. It could be a small little fracture. It could be some type of cellulitis, just involving immobilizing the patient in a position so it can allow for inflammation. Because this is going to be now removable, the goal is to make it very comfortable for the patient, get nice range of motion for the patient. We're going to stop the splint at the distal palmar crease, going at an angle going down. But we're also going to ensure that it terminates at the uh, antecubital space, one or two inches. So with this, it's imperative that you let the patient know what we're gonna be doing because they will not be able to take it off, uh, especially if they want to shower or what have you, it has to be covered. So we're gonna stop it here, the distal palmar crease, go down here for that particular patient. So let's measure first and take care of everything. So first I'm gonna do is just measure on the uninjured extremity and uh, ensure that there's no jewelry on the patient, also any skin issues, abrasions, what have you, just to ensure everything is good to go prior to. So you can have the patient on the non-injured extremity, just use some padding or use a measuring tape that's a little bit quicker for yourself. And here we go, that's our little template that we're gonna be using. Now, because this is now removable, we're going to go ahead and either add some stockinette, if you will, or no stockinette at all. I'm gonna add some stockinette just to encompass the splint to make it a lot neater for the patient. And you can do that by just adding on just 50% more length so you can have enough to envelope your splint on the patient. So here we go, we got our stockinette. All right, get this patient in position. Now the position that we're gonna concentrate on for the patient is gonna be neutral to 20 degrees of extension. And you notice that I have the stockinette at least past the PIP joints and a little bit past the fold of the elbow to ensure I have enough closure of the stockinette and then pull the stockinette away from the base of the thumb if you cut the hole afterwards, just to ensure the patient knows that you identify their digit. Now let's apply some padding. Of course, we're gonna have our padding in a snail type position, the roll to the sky this way or this way. We're gonna start at the wrist, go to the hand, and then go back down the forearm. As we apply this portion, going through the web space, you wanna make sure that you have a nice little padding around this thumb area, just to make sure it's more comfortable for the patient. I'm applying a minimum of two layers, a max of four, but I'm gonna palpate with the bony promise to ensure that I have enough applied just for comfort for the patient but it's not overly padded where the splint itself can start to shift. So as I go down the cylinder-like portion of the extreme, I'll start using what we call a 50-50 coverage. Every revolution around, I try to cover 50% of what I just put on. Work my way back up distal here. Tear that off, now it looks pretty neat. There's no thin areas. If there were some thin areas, that's what we worry about because that can cause pressure in some areas or irritation to the patient. So we want to check and palpate over the bony prominences. Now, time to prepare our plaster splint. I'll just get this space ready for myself here. This is the traditional way and the meticulousness of plaster allows for a a nice contoured effect on the patient. And so a lot of providers will love to have that just for mobilization purposes. 
So that's what we're going to apply. When you use your plaster, you want to have 10 to 15 layers for upper extremities and let the patient know if they're conscious, hey, you may feel a little bit of more exothermic reaction because of the heat, okay? Next, here's my little template I made earlier. And so all I'm gonna do now is just cut that to length. And what you notice here, I have this kind of cut at an angle to fit as far as the angle of the distal palmar crease on the patient. Next, what I did is made a little half moon so that it allows for more range of motion for that patient around their thumb. That's important if you really want to make sure that it's comfortable for the patient. Now, since this is plaster and it's now removable, what we want to do is once we wet this and we apply it on the patient, we want to put maybe one or two layers of padding directly on top of it when we wrap it just to ensure that the uh, plaster does not stick to the elastic bandage, just in case for an urgent matter where it was too constrictive and that need to be removed by emergency room staff. So that's what we're gonna do afterwards. So you hold onto the ends of your plaster to ensure that it doesn't spill out, if you will. Dip it in the water to bubble cease. Notice that it's all together. We're gonna to do a little accordion fold. Mash it together. And we just went ahead and got a little bit more extra water out of it. Now what we're gonna do here is we're just smoothing it out just so we can make sure that we smooth out all the plaster in the impregnated galls. And what that does is ensure that you provide extra strength in pushing those layers together. And what I'm doing here next is just fold this down. This is a little bit more of an angle here because this is a little bit too high on the distal perma crease to allow for full range of motion. That's what we're gonna really concentrate on for the patient. Now this is where we just put the padding on. Just lower the stockinette down on the patients and go ahead and put a little bit of padding on this. And this is just to ensure that the elastic bandage does not stick to the plaster. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and apply our elastic bandage to the patient. And just ensure that you're not pulling too hard. You can see through your elastic bandage, that's maybe a little bit too much on the patient. So that's a good indicator for yourself. After we apply this elastic band, we're gonna really concentrate on our position, which is gonna be neutral up to 20 degrees of extension. But that, again, that is up to the provider's preference. So let's get this patient in a neutral position. And our goal now is to go ahead and to get the patients in position with some extension. So I'll go ahead and just put my hand in their hand. Put a little bit of pressure behind the wrist joint and get that extension that I need. This particular plastic that I'm using is the extra fast set. So we got maybe two to four minutes. Now what we have here is the bowler splint that's plaster, but we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna be using the orthoglass solo because it's a nice thin substrate 
it's going to conform just as well and it's going to cure and within 15 to 20 minutes compared to plaster that takes a little bit longer for it to cure. All right, we did the same exact stockinette and padding application. All we're going to do now is add orthoglass solo. Now, what I like about this is that it's a thin substrate. It's going to cure so much faster compared to plaster. Plaster is going to cure, depending on the thickness, of course, about 24 to 48 hours. Now, you may have medical staff who moving around the patient or the patient's not totally cured yet and, or the splint is not totally cured yet. And then you may have a little bit of movement. And that is what we don't have to worry about with this because it's going to get rock solid within 20 minutes. So pull it out of the package, of course. You can put this directly on. I prefer to just go ahead and just take it out of the liner. And here's my template from earlier. So I go ahead and cut off what I do not need. And you notice that it's pretty thin. It has the interlocking performance where it's just sewn together so that decrease the likelihood of delamination. And it's a nice little product there. But let's go ahead we curve that little end. We don't get this at an angle just like before. And then we're going to make a little half moon for the thumb. Okay. For application purpose of around the padding of the thumb, just want to show you this little difference where you can just put a little bit more padding around the thumb if need be. I folded the padding and toward the, in the middle just a little bit, and that little slit is going to go toward the index finger. Then I'll wrap that around. And just to make it a little bit more stationary, just poke a little hole in your padding. This is a three inch that I'm using, and it makes it nice and neat and a little bit more padding around that thumb area. And we can just go ahead and activate this. A little bit of water, squeeze that out. And let me cut this down again. Size, there we go. Still apply a little bit of padding on, on this so that we could take off the last advantage if necessary. So we have it all applied, but let's go ahead and apply some elastic bandage. Because this is non-removable, I'm going to go ahead and make a little hole for the thumb. Do that again. I did a little pinch close to where the thumb is going to be placed through the hole, and then I went ahead and put it through there. But one of the things you want to make sure is you check the opening is wide enough. Just make sure it's not too constrictive. Now let's get that position that we were trying to get on the first one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my palm in that patient's palm, a little bit of pressure on the joint area behind the wrist and get that extension of that I need it far as neutral to 20 degrees of extension. And this is going to set within three to five minutes and cure totally within 15 to 20 minutes. So that's a peak advantage. And then you have a low, thin substrate, just like the plaster was. Same application, two different products, but the cure time is going to be uh, wholly different. And I do like that. So go ahead and try the orthoglass solo, but concentrate on your position because we need to make sure that we're still doing the same thing and getting that patient in as comfortable as possible, but mobilizing them the way they should be. Thank you. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.